Well, one of the other threats to our republic is the the effort to undermine clean elections. And it's often more most direct where you have uh, opposition to voter ID, challenges to voter ID, uh, this vote by mail craziness that's being pushed right now that would upend voter ID in 35 states, result in mass ballot harvesting, which would lead to voter fraud and intimidation and chaos. They want to turn over your elections for the president to the post office. I mean, that's how crazy it is. And of course, they hate the idea of citizenship verification, the very notion that you might do something more than take someone at their word that they're a citizen before allowing them, allowing them to register the vote or vote. The left doesn't want that. And they've got dozens of organizations pushing on this issue. Obviously, the Democratic leadership, which is in their back pocket, is, do, is pushing this as well. And why does the left want to undermine clean elections? Because they want elections to be dirty, it looks like to me. They want to be able to steal elections when necessary. And sometimes uh, either purposefully or uh, simply because of bureaucratic incompetence or negligence, they don't keep the voter rolls clean. And by making the voter rolls clean, I mean following federal law, the National Voter Registration Act, that requires states to take reasonable steps to clean up the rolls. And Judicial Watch has been the leader nationally in enforcing that law. Thankfully, the law allows private actors to enforce the law. The Justice Department has zero interest in doing it, even under the Trump administration, they haven't done much. Judicial Watch did the first private lawsuits in Indiana and in Ohio around 2012-2013. We have this big settlement in California that's resulted in LA County taking, uh, moving forward with the process of removing up to 1.6 million inactive names from the rolls. What do I mean by inactive? They're people who haven't voted in a long time. And you don't vote, there's a process in place which you are, uh, states are supposed to follow to clean up the rolls. And that process can include and should include doing something simple like sending you a card and if you don't respond to the card and don't vote in two election cycles. So let's say I get the card today and I don't vote in this year or in 2022, they can remove me from the rolls. Does that sound controversial to you? Well, the left hates it because dirty voting rolls in my view, uh, even if these people are so posed inactive, that's a pool of voters that are eligible to vote and still registered to vote and can vote on election day. And if you haven't voted in a long time and they haven't removed your name, you can go and still vote. And I encourage you to do so if that's what you want to do. But if you're an active, meaning that you used to live in a state and have moved away and they still think you live there. I mean, you can see the recipe for fraud there. So just a few weeks ago, the, or earlier, last, I guess it's now May, so I guess it's last month, we sued North Carolina because uh, North Carolina and several counties in that state had voter, were not doing their job in terms of cleaning up the list. Statewide, our analysis found in the lawsuit, there were around a million names that are on the, roll, on the rolls that arguably shouldn't be there. So that case is proceeding. Right now, there's a leftist group trying to intervene to oppose Judicial Watch's efforts to clean up the rolls. So we're not only just taking on the state of North Carolina and those counties that were sued in North Carolina, but now we've got, obviously, the organized left trying to stop us now. But we're prepared. We're fighting back. And in fact, we're just we're fighting back even harder in the sense we just filed a lawsuit this week in Pennsylvania against Pennsylvania and several counties in Pennsylvania to clean its voter rolls. The counties in Pennsylvania are, for those of you who live there, um, there are three counties, Bucks County, Chester County, and Delaware County. Bucks County has about 475 registrations. They removed a total of eight names under the relevant National Voter Registration Act procedures. Eight names. Chester County, 357,000 registrations, removed only five names under the procedures that we've been highlighting. Delaware County, 
403,000 names. They removed four names under those procedures. That tells you they're not doing their job. And the Justice Department is nowhere to be seen in enforcing the law here. And Judicial Watch has to go in, sue Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the three counties there. I was just talking to a reporter today. I guess some politician up there said, oh, we're just suing them because they're Democrats. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't even know who runs the counties. It's the data. The numbers show the names are bad or the lists are bad. Statewide in California, excuse me, in um in Pennsylvania, or around 800,000 names need to be removed, it looks like. 800,000 names. And under the left's theory of the mail-in ballot craziness, all of them would get ballots in the mail. And who knows what else? So these, these cases are really key uh, to uh, making sure that your elections are cleaner in November. Now, there are other states on our radar screen. Uh, we warned California. We, long, we warned Colorado. Uh, we also warned Virginia. Where the leftist governor down there, the leftist attorney general, excuse me, is trying to negotiate a deal with the ACLU to undermine absentee ballot security. Absentee ballots uh, in Virginia, my understanding is, requires you to have a witness attest to the fact you're commit you're doing the ballot, you know, basic security check. And the ACLU is pretending that the coronavirus won't allow that to take place. I mean, do you see how they're undermining the security of elections? I don't know what the federal court judge is going to do there, whether they're going to whether he's going to approve it or not. But this is a this is an this is a battle that's state by state. It's nationally, Pelosi's pushing this nationally in Congress. And Judicial Watch is on the front lines, I'm pleased to say. And we're, uh, right now, we're trying to remove nearly 2 million names in two states. No one else is doing it. And voters who are living there and ineligible to vote are going to vote. And that's not the issue. The left will tell you, say, we'll hear you say, well, there's a big purge that will suppress people. That's ridiculous. Your name is only removed if you haven't voted in a long time and you haven't responded. And even if it's removed, you can obviously re-register and vote. Does that make sense to you? And the fact that the left opposes it tells you to me, what their motives are here. So we've got the case moving, um, and we'll see what happens. And, you know, look, we the, sometimes we don't even have to sue to get good results. We sent this warning letter to some counties in Virginia, excuse me, in, in Pennsylvania, and one of the counties we ended up suing, they, uh, according to a news report, let me find it here, um, removed... 60,000 names from the rolls. 60,000 names. Alley County County removed, excuse me, 69,000 inactive voters from the rolls. The elections manager told CBS, the local CBS affiliate in Pittsburgh there, I would concede that we are behind on calling our rolls. Calling, C-U-L-L-I-N-G. And that this had been put on the back burner. So our letter, without us having to file a lawsuit, educated that county official about his obligations under law, and he took immediate steps as he was allowed to do under law to remove names that they had been sitting on, 69,000 names. So we already, we, we've kind of won in some respects in Pennsylvania already. Another great group is, uh, is pushing the county Allegheny because there are still dead mate people on the rolls there. So that's another big issue. But this is just great. I, it's, I, I, it's great in two levels. It's great that we're able to just show up and they're, they get so nervous and they're so concerned about our, our, our reputation and work that they do what they need to do immediately without our having to sue. And what's also great is that we're willing to sue because no one will pay attention to you in this day and age 
especially corrupt government officials, unless you haul them into court. And Judicial Watch is doing it like no one else, in not only in the country, in the world, is doing it. There's no other, as there, there, there's in terms of a government accountability, government watchdog, citizen group, there's nothing like Judicial Watch in the world. Nothing like it. Certainly not in the country. And if it's nothing like us in the country, there's nothing like us in the world. And we do it with your support. I want to thank you again for that.